Good happy Monday morning, January 10, 2022. I'm Riley King. Welcome to this Monday morning edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this Monday morning, so let's get started right now. First step, search continues for missing Harmony Montgomery. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Harmony Montgomery's family member tells News 9 he is heartbroken over her disappearance and the family did try to help. For the second straight day, investigators working at a home on Guilford Street in Manchester, the last known location of seven-year-old Harmony Montgomery. Kind of scary. I mean, we always thought something was weird a few years ago when the house was running on a generator in the middle of the summer, but we've never seen anything. Meanwhile, we're heartbroken. We're heartbroken. Family members continue to ask for the public's help in finding the little girl, last seen in 2019. We're hopeful. Um... It's been a long time since anyone has seen her, um, so emotions are all over the place. Kevin Montgomery is Harmony's great uncle. He says his relationship with her side of the family is strained, but says his family tried to help her. A lot of criticism out there from the general public, and they know nothing. Uh, she was loved. She was loved. Just uh, some of the people that loved her the most we had no rights when it came to parents. We had no rights. Kevin Montgomery is asking for anyone who saw anything to call authorities, even if they want to remain anonymous. Somebody seen this little girl last um, somewhere. Somebody knows something. And Manchester police tell News 9 they'll be back at that property tomorrow. The current homeowners are not connected to the case in any way. Live in Manchester, Jessica Marin, WMUR, News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. State tram inspection investigating after snowboarder's lift chair falls to ground. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. A scary scene at Wildcat Mountain Saturday after a 22-year-old snowboarder fell nine and a half feet to the ground after the chair he was riding on detached from the lift. Started a misload uh, with the chair. The chair began to swing and it hit the tower uh, right, on, right as it started to hit up the mountain and it uh, detached from the cable. The incident happened on the Snowcat triple lift around noon Saturday. The lift is a riblet design lift, an older model and technology than most chairlifts nowadays, but investigators say they are still safe to operate. Fortunately, occasionally accidents do happen. State Fire Marshal Sean Toomey tells News 9 the snowboarder seriously injured his ribs, but is expected to be all right. He was transported to Androscoggin Valley Hospital in Berlin after the fall. He fell approximately nine and a half feet to the ground with the chairs. Other riders on the lift were able to get off safely following the incident. The state's tram inspectors will return to Wildcat Mountain Monday morning to resume their investigation. The Snowcat Triple will remain closed until the investigation is complete and the lift is retested and reapproved by the chief tramway inspector. They would possibly have it open middle of the week to the end of this week, barring any uh, complications they discover probably tomorrow once they're back out there. I'm Scott Cook, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And we are going to switch gears now, and let's go into weather. Weather right now is partly cloudy, 31 degrees, feels like 19 degrees. Brr, bundle up today. And there is a weather alert, wind chill advisory in effect from 2 a.m. to 10 a.m. Eastern Tuesday. 
and there are currently two closings and delays. Auburn Montressi Preschool will be closed today, and New Fields School will be closed today as well. With a full with a full weather forecast, let's go to meteorologist Jacqueline Thomas, and um, we will be seeing dangerous cold to impact New Hampshire this week. With that full weather forecast, let's go to meteorologist Jacqueline Thomas right now. Living in northern New England doesn't mean you have to spend the winter on your roof. Forever Metal roofs are designed to shed snow while the energy... Thanks for watching. I'm meteorologist Jacqueline Thomas. Hope you've had a wonderful weekend. Hopefully you were okay with some of the slick conditions out there today. And now you got to prepare for the cold. We have some very cold air on the way and bitterly cold wind chills in addition to that. And with that, we actually have a wind chill watch in effect for Grafton and Coloss counties here in New Hampshire because of those bitter wind chills expected well below zero as we head through later Monday and into Tuesday. So impact Packed weather on the way with the cold. An Arctic blast arrives. The coldest air will be Tuesday. Cold air and cold wind chills. And we're talking double digits below zero up to 35 degrees below zero possible in those areas where we do have that wind chill watch. Satellite and radar though has quieted down from earlier in the day when we were seeing those slick conditions, the icy conditions, couple of snow showers and then rain showers and spots too. And there may be a snow shower or two around as we end out the night behind this front that's pushing through. Lows tonight fall back into the single digits north, teens to near 20 degrees south. So the night tonight isn't going to be that cold. We are going to see a breeze though which will make it feel colder and then it's these next couple of days where the cold really sets in. On Monday the high temperatures only reach the teens north with 20 south and temperatures will be dropping as the day goes on behind that Arctic front. But at least we get back into a little bit of sunshine to start the week. So even though it'll be cold and chilly, uh, we'll have a bright sky, which always helps a little bit. But even during the day on Monday, it's likely going to feel like the single digits south most of the afternoon, and it'll likely feel like it's below zero up north through Monday afternoon. And then temperatures continue to drop. And as temperatures continue to drop, the wind chills become much more significant by Tuesday morning. This is 8 a.m. Tuesday. This is what it could feel like as you're stepping out the door, whether it's heading to work, dropping the kids off to school. You're going to want to make sure that you're bundled up. And if kids have to wait for the school bus or things like that, you don't want to out be outside for extended periods of time. Because once we get to wind chills this cold, I mean, 20 to 30 degrees below zero, it only takes minutes before we're talking about that concern for frostbite. So dangerously cold wind chills on the way. And then even during the day on Tuesday, here's 2 p.m., it's still going to feel like it's below zero across the area. So very, very cold on the way, especially Tuesday. As far as any chances for precipitation these next few days with that cold, it'll be pretty limited. We actually get a good amount of sunshine. We'll see a mix of sun and clouds through these next couple of days. As we head through Monday evening, there could be a couple of snow showers or flurries in spots, possibly a snow squall as we see some of these stronger winds too behind that Arctic front. And then that cold really sets in by Tuesday. But as we head into Wednesday, the morning is going to be cold and then temperatures start to moderate from there. So the daytime on Wednesday won't be as bad. We get back into the 20s and we'll see a mix of clouds and sun. So in the seven day forecast, impact weather on the way with that cold, especially for Tuesday with those freezing cold wind chills. And then the rest of the week, temperatures start to moderate a bit. We're at least back into the 30s by Thursday. Okay, and there you go on that weather forecast and meteorologist Jacqueline Thomas. Thank you for that weather forecast, Jacqueline. And that does it for this morning edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. Thank you for tuning in and watching. Goodbye.